little bit about late stage investing. The topic is more about the criteria, but I figured I'd define late stage investing because there's so many different funds and, and folks out there doing different things. And each one of those funds actually has different criteria. So I'm just trying to summarize some of that here. And frankly, it is a bit of a dry topic. So as I go through this, just jump in and ask questions and make it more interactive. Um, otherwise, I just have a couple slides and go through some key concepts and take it from there. So what is late stage investing? A lot of people define criteria for companies, uh, like has a business plan or is profitable. I actually like to think about it in terms of types of risk. Just like you guys are starting companies or leading companies, evaluate the risks of your business, so do investors. So we define risk in four buckets. We have market risk, team risk, product risk, and execution risk. And I would say that along the gamut of investors from early stage to late stage, the types of risk that a fund is willing to take really defines to me more of their earlier stage or late stage. So market, right? If a market is evolving, you have a great idea for a business, you don't know if there's budget spend, it's highly innovative, um, that's market risk. You don't know how big it is, you don't know if there's people buying, there's lots of early stage investors who will bet on you and your idea for a variety of reasons, maybe just because of who you are. But the market's not defined. Late stage investors, pretty much across the board, do not take market risk. So you have to have defined market. They will ask you the TAM. Uh, they will ask you how you came up with that. They'll ask you who is going to buy your product. And they'll actually be able to do diligence on your market. So even though there's a pretty broad range of late stage investing, um, almost no late stage investor will take the market risk. Team risk. This is something that's very different between early stage and late stage. So often, when there's no defined market or there's a big market, but how to address it isn't highly defined yet, what early stage investors are really betting on is you, right? Is the team. We'll hear this over and over. The single biggest criteria often from early stage investors, right, is the team. Team risk can be defined from an early stage perspective as who's starting the company, right, the founders. At a later stage, what you actually are looking for is a team of executives who can grow the company and scale it. So sometimes, late stage investors like ourselves, in fact, are actually willing to take team risk. So the transition from <coughs> founders or the transition from a few very technical folks to building a company with a marketing organization, a CMO, a head of sales. Those can often be executives that come later in a company and from the outside. And not having that in place is actually a risk that a lot of late stage investors are willing to take because in fact, we know those people. We worked with them. We can bring them into your company and help with that. So the founding team is obviously very important still, but unlike for early stage investors, Late stage investors actually are willing to take more team risk. So this is something that as you think about yourself scaling and as you think about who's your approach for investment, you actually may want to consider because a late stage investor actually may love your company. They recognize your importance if you're a founder and starting the company and scaling it, but actually may not think you or your team is the right executive management team to take that company to the next level. And you may want to think about that if someone suggests that to you. So we're willing to take team risk. Product risk. So this is pretty much geared towards technology. Does the product work? Does the technology work? So early stage investors tend to, they want to see usually a beta, they don't want to see your product. But late stage investors actually want customers to be using your product. Generally speaking, they don't want to take technology and product risk. Right? It has to work has to be at customers. The number of customers, the scale, that depends on, that's the philosophy of late stage investors. But in general, don't want to take product to technology risk. Execution risk or business model risk. This is pretty much one thing that I think that most investors, early stage or late stage, will take risk on. Because 
what you're trying to do at the point that you're looking for late stage capital is actually scale your business. Yeah, for sure. And that could involve, okay, I've tried a couple of different business models, and I think this is going to work. I think I found something repeatable. But now I actually need the capital to go scale it out and really see if it works. So execution, which is often underrated in the hits of Lincoln Valley, um, is actually the prime type of risk that late stage investors like to take. And many of them can actually help you with that, right? So if you're trying to hire people to help you scale functions, if you're trying to build out uh, ecosystems, partners, all the things that will help you sell more and basically execute on your original product and vision, all the internal operations that your company needs to define and scale. This is all risk that late stage investors will take. So basically, late stage investors don't like to take market risk, they don't like to take product and technology risk, broadly speaking. Some will take team risk and most all will take execution. So that's how I'm defining the late stage universe. It's a little hard to read, I apologize, but this is all now in that universe of late stage. There are, well, there's hundreds of different kinds of firms, but I try to categorize them into sort of three buckets, again, all late stage, and what their criteria tends to be. Now again, I originally started with trying to map hundred different logos on here. And it was basically just a big map of logos because even these firms I have on here, which are broadly representative of leaders in these categories, if you actually go talk to them and you meet all these criteria, they may still have different criteria. So this is just generally speaking. So late stage venture, what is that? These are folks that are often leaders in the early stage, right, who tend to invest in C or Series A but they've developed growth firms in the last 10 years, let's call it. And if they miss a great Series A opportunity, or they want to partner with another great early stage investor in the next round, they kind of call that late stage investing or growth investing. It tends to still be a Series B or C, and it still tends to be relatively small check size, right? So not the $50 million big money checks, right? Five, 10, 15 million dollars. They still actually expect to hold that investment for three to five years. And they actually expect time to profitability. <coughs> right? So it's late stage and early stage in a sense. But it's called late stage investing or growth investing. Now, I have less valuation sensitive on here. The reason for that is not because they, like every other investor, doesn't need to make their expected returns. It's primarily because they have longer hold times. So they're getting in earlier. So even if they get in in Series B, and they're you know, paying 10x multiples or 12x multiples on revenue, they're still getting in at 50 million or 75 million, but with the expectation that they're gonna sell for 500 million or a billion. Right, so they're getting in at absolute dollar amounts that are low enough that they can be, quote unquote, valuation insensitive from a multiples perspective. Then you have sort of a second category of late stage investors. I call them momentum investors. That's not a derogatory or, or positive term, it's just a characterization. These are folks that actually have slightly different investment return criteria. So they tend to look more at one to three X returns shorter hold times. They actually tend to look for growth still, but since they invest a little bit later stage, so you see D sometimes even pre-IPO, they're looking for shorter hold times. Profitability or the path to profitability is important, but not, at least in the last couple of years, necessary. And because they're looking for, let's call it a shorter hold time, and I don't want to say a quicker flip because that tends to sound negative, they're just less valuation sensitive. And their benchmarks, if you look at some of the logos here, are actually investing in the public markets, right? So Fidelity, Tiger, and a lot of these big hedge fund like companies that have come in to Silicon Valley and invested in private tech companies in the last four years, they haven't found growth in public markets. So they'll take the 2x return in four years or the 1.5x return because that gets the hell out of investing in, in public equities recently. 
Last is sort of classic growth. So this is the this category of late stage investing has actually been around the longest, probably for 30 years or so, even in technology. And this is a very different model. It actually uh, doesn't always follow sort of the traditional Silicon Valley, um, lots of different venture capital investors building up stacks and boards. These companies tend to like bootstrap companies. So if you've actually been able to build your company on your own, and you are close to cash flow positive break even, you don't necessarily want to give tons of your company away. But on the, on the flip side, you don't necessarily think you need tons of capital because either your market opportunity isn't gigantic or you found something that you want to scale maybe more slowly. These investors don't have the same growth requirements, but they also may take a little bit more of your business and they may actually be more valuation sensitive because, again, they're looking for still three to five X returns. So if you're only going to sell a company for three, four, five hundred million dollars, you need to be able to invest in a company at a valuation level and kind of justify that. The other way these firms make money, yeah. frankly, is they can hold on to the company or their equity in it for 10 years. And because the company is cash flow positive or break even, they can actually dividend out from the cash flow of your company, especially if you don't need that money to grow and pay themselves that way. So again, very different criteria depending on who you're looking for from the late stage perspective. Okay, sorry, classic growth, why, why would the company not seek classic loans? They do. They do. So I, I'm not going to pass judgment on any of these approaches. Um, often, the model here on the right is one where you have a bootstrapped company that just wants some money and wants to maintain control and doesn't want to, I don't want to say, play the Silicon Valley game, um, and that's a good fit. Or the alternative is venture debt or loans, yeah. but maybe they don't qualify for that, even with the cash flow. So there are some companies that are great companies that kind of would still seek these folks as investors. Um, there are other companies for different reasons that might go to this class of investors. But so you should be very cognizant, right, if you're knocking on the door of whoever it is you're knocking on the door for your B, C, D, or E, what their investment philosophy is, what they're looking for, and what the trade-off is that they're looking for between growth and profitability. Last slide. So there's hardly a way to make this generic, because as I said, there's just three different categories, and in fact, there's probably 10 different categories within those three categories. But I just want to leave you with a couple of thoughts. From a criteria perspective for late stage, market is important, just like in early stage, right? That's the biggest thing, besides you, right, that carries your company is customer demand, right? Customers themselves, so the, the first thing that I look for if you come to pitch me is who are your customers do I know them? And I'll just call them literally the next day. I tend to know most of the folks who are buying enterprise IT and due diligence on those customers. Team, right? So it doesn't have to be the founding team, but it has to be <coughs> leaders in their industry from a functional perspective. And if you don't have them, a lot of the late stage investors can actually help you get there. So think about that. Think about what your holes are as you go to late stage investors. Go to market. Any late stage investor is going to want to at least see that you try different go to markets, right? From a sales perspective, you have an idea about business model. It may not be cemented yet, but there's something approaching repeatability there, which really needs the capital to go scale the hell out of it. Revenue, this is all over the charts, right? But traditionally, you don't have these 10 million in revenue. You're probably not ready for a quote unquote late stage investor. Growth, everybody wants growth. People want more growth, the better. But in general, even if you're at that 40, 50, 60 million dollars in revenue, people want to see at least 20 million in growth. Profitability, again, whether it's now or in the future, all late stage investors want to see the path to profitability, not be, yes, and we'll be profitable probably sometime in 2019. We'll figure it out then. Right, that's not even playing well with early stage investors anymore, um, but never has played well with late stage investors. 
And this is just something to keep in mind. Every investor talks about wanting to build their business, build your business with you. And that's absolutely true for most of them. But we also have people we answer to. We need to generate returns for our LPs. And often, if we say no, it's not because there's anything wrong with your company. It's just where we come in at from a valuation perspective and our expectation of where we could exit doesn't fit the target return profile for our investment strategy or funds. Just keep that in mind. What are the return expectations from the investors you're going to? It's going to be early stage as well. But late stage, because the returns are lower, right? because it's not this home run model of I need two IPOs and then 18 can go under, almost every single company has to do well in the late stage portfolio, so you can't be sort of a zero. That's it. Any questions? I think I'm out of time, but please. Uh, can you talk about the markdowns that uh, investors have today and uh, apply to portfolio Sure, they invested too high and they had to <laughs> <laughs> portfolio. Now I'm being facetious. Um, but one of the disadvantages of that middle category of late stage investors that is coming to the market is they actually have to market to market, right? Because they're evaluating themselves against the public equity performance. So again, something you may want to consider, and some of those companies that received investments from Fidelity and so forth are now realizing what is the implication of that, that every quarter it's going to be public what my valuation is because Fidelity is going to market up or market down. Again, something just to consider as you pick your investment. Not all money is the same. Okay. Awesome. Okay, sorry, I got the cut off, but I can talk to you afterwards if you have a question. Thank you.